I ignored my destiny once. I cannot do that again. Even for you. I'm the only one who knows that. At least I'm the only one with the will to act on it. The Mad Titan Podcast with your host, Jay Washington. What's happening, everybody? I'm back. It is episode 91 of the Man Titan Podcast. I told y'all I'm staying regular with these. I'm regular like your bowel movements. If you are an elderly person, don't keep it going like a lot of fiber in your system. But now nah, we back again. Thank you, everybody. Been hitting us up, hitting me up, man. Showing a lot of love, a lot of appreciation, a lot of the tweets I get about the episodes, a lot of the comments, a lot of questions and everything. And so I appreciate that everybody that slid into the email and the hotline i will get to your emails today i got a couple of them to get to but i'm gonna get right into it man on the show with me today i brought one of the homies back man me and him talk a lot of shit about uh comic book stuff he always hit me up when he got a hell of a lot of gripes about everything dc uh like all of the gripes and i, I love to hear him because like it's, it's just you know it's, it's dope when your, your homies and peeps reach out to you about it but we chatted up about that and then he was about to come at me on Twitter about a uh, take I had on the Batman, which we'll get to a little later. But I got the homie comedian, actor, writer, and extraordinaire, Mr. Nick Alexander. What up, bro? Yo, Mad Titan, Jay Washington. What's good, brother? Hey, man, you're lucky <laughs> I like you, bro. You're lucky I like you as a friend. I'm lucky home. too, man. I'm you're happy to be I was, here. <laughs> I was like, you're lucky I like you, Negro. How's life, man? How's everything? You know what I'm saying? You a new dad, new dad recently and everything? Yeah, man, it's it's tough. Like sleep is different, you know. Uh, I had to wake up in the middle of the night, spend some time dolo so that mama mama could sleep, mm-hmm. and uh, and then yeah, my, I'm just all wonky with the scheduling. So like, it just I be thinking a certain time, and then I'm be like, oh crap! Like it's like you gotta really, it's you gotta really manage your time, and um, so I'm just learning how to do that better. Uh, and it's been great. My daughter's good. She got two little teeth on the bottom and gums. So how old is she now? She just turned eight months uh saturday the oh, 13th man. sorry the 13th she made eight months but yeah so it was cool i had family out this week uh my mom's and my grandmother they flew out from new york um to spend my birthday with me and, and just to hang out with the, with the baby girl and it was fun so just like, like lots of good family time quality time you know you don't really you gotta like look at it like how many times am i gonna get this in my life you know what i'm saying my mom and right. my grandmother are here you know to, to to see my granddaughter my, my daughter and spend time so i was like let me just enjoy this and i did it was really good good really man good. i'm glad to hear that how you bro. doing also, you good how you been hey bro i'm 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 good man you know i'm staying busy as always this is literally as we're recording yeah. this this is the third thing i've had to do in a row in this a row. morning already i had to do i was in a writer's workshop earlier Whew. uh first then I had to do a one-on-one with the supervillain that I do for the members of the Patreon. Then okay. I'm doing this. Then after I'm done with this, I'm going to try to hit the gym for like 45 minutes, come back, edit this, and then decide if I'm either going to call it a day or I'm just going to keep writing on these pilots and trying to flesh out this other idea, man. I'm trying to get – I'm on my fourth pilot writing. And so, wow. I'm, bro, I've just been – I've been, you know, inspired. I'm, I'm, still, I'm still on one. <laughs> <laughs> bro i i did like it's just been, it's been i think the thing i was telling everybody for me yeah yeah, yeah. I, I i you know of course being a creative is what we are as comedians and everything but also having ideas to what you want to write and you yes. know having writer friends helps but also when you see so many scripts when you're auditioning so much you mm-hmm. understand the format of what a script should look like what you're trying to give now granted yes well i am i saying they're they're perfect and don't need punch-ups eventually no no, but no, the no, punch-ups no. I'm learning that they're needing are few and far between. So that is that is giving me a lot of good vibes when I'm hearing it. Like, yo, your dog, this don't need to really check. Just tweak this little bit here, or tweak that yeah. little bit there. And so, you know, that's what allowed me to just flow and push out these ideas. Because, of course, you know, the goal is to, for me, I always hit, I was told this, instead of always worrying about getting put on somebody else's shit, make your own shit. And that at part. the same time, you know what I'm saying? If I could sell a show or sell two or three, I want to have I want to have stuff in the can. So when yeah. I have these, because I had a production meeting, I had a meeting, a general meeting a couple of months ago with a production company, and uh, me and the lady were talking, 
and she was like, yo, so what do you want to do? I was like, yo, I want, I want to keep writing and, you know, performing and all this. And I want to put my own stuff out there. And she was like, do you have anything together? I was like, yeah, I got a couple ideas, blah, blah, blah. She was like, oh, do you just have the ideas? I was like, no, I got scripts already done. She was like, what? I was like, yeah, I got the scripts already done. She's like, because most people don't have those done. They just yeah, have the yeah. idea. They don't have the script. So to have that, that's all that's kept motivating me to do it. You know what I'm saying? Just like take some time and just iron out and just, you know, pop out words and whatnot. But other than that, like I said, getting ready, uh, you know, doing that. I'm back wrestling next month. Uh, so you gotta invite, are you inviting comics to watch you wrestle? I Dude, I, 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 dog, comics are more than welcome to come to any show. Whenever I put up the, whenever I put up the flyers, comics are more than welcome, bro. I would love the more to marry you. Come out, check, I got, check it I, out. I, I, I gotta say this to myself. Me and Summer, we were talking. About, I was like, you know, Jay, he's he's he he used to wrestle. And she was like, I can see that. You know, my Summer, she's like, I can, yeah, I can see. That. And he was like, yo, Jay's back in the ring. And she was yeah, like, something I know. like, because we was like, who? Like you ask brothers in their lifetime, like how many black wrestlers you know? It's probably gonna be zero most most of the time. Most yeah. of the time, it was like you don't know no black wrestlers. So I, I now yeah. I know one. I I got you know, I, I went to yeah I went to one live wrestling show when I was when I was a kid. So like in New York, they do this shit in public high schools. They'll yeah, to the gym and to the tickets, and so we saw yeah. like, some some some, some, uh, you know, some indie wrestling baby, wrestling. Yeah, indie, indie wrestling. wrestling baby. That's what it is. That's what this is. And so, and and that's the thing I was about to bring up. Like nowadays, you can find more black indie wrestlers than ever. Like it is, there have always been an abundance of black wrestlers, but now black indie wrestlers are starting to get more shine and more shouts and shots and whatnot. And so it's always a good thing. So yeah, but dude, just adding that onto. Yeah. Was it Masterpiece of, supposed, supposed to start like an urban wrestling league or something? But he bought he he no he bought House of Glory out of New York. Uh -huh. He bought House of Glory wrestling, and that that was all that you heard of it. He hasn't put his face to it. He hasn't exactly. done anything to help push it or anything like that. And that was what the hope everybody was hoping. Like, yo, if you Master P and you got this, your name holds weight. It holds. Yeah, volume. I mean, if, if you're a big rapper, um, mogul, whatever, when you put your name on something black, it only helps that uh, that lane explode. Whether the the athlete attaches his name to comedy, or the rapper puts his name on the comedy, or to some other thing, or the liquor, or whatever like that. So it's like, yo, rapper mm -hmm. Drake, Master P, you know, uh, Rick Ross, man, put your name on some wrestlers, man. Let's like let's. <laughs> Bro, it's the absolute truth, though. It's the absolute yeah. truth. So, I mean, everybody. O OVO, you happen. want to do OVO wrestling? Like, <laughs> bro, if Drake wanted to get in the ring, I swear to God, I'd be like, bro, yo, I need that. I'd be a part of that for what? I wear the yo, wear the owl shirt. I wear the. I have an owl singlet on, bro. I have a. I have an owl on my wrestling boots, nigga. What is you talking about? But let's. Uh, <laughs> but for let me those, just do a compliment real quick. Let me, sorry, go let me ahead. Start. Just uh, when you're talking about how you just been hustling with all your different projects, and I think it's important for the listeners to understand about you is that, like, and with anything, uh, the more you do something, the better that you that you get. So when it comes to your progression as a writer, you know, I've, I've read some of the things that you've written, and I'm like, I show, I know you're probably like ten times better now, and like, pod, even podcasting with you, like, I see how your setup is good, your intro, your 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 uh, transitions, like. All those little minor details improve because you constantly keep doing it. When it's stand up too, Jay's hilarious. So it's like with anybody who's ever thinking about doing something, just the more you do it, the better you get. And you, you keep trying to work at it also. Like Jay is right, but he's also in a right workshop where he's not. So it's not just, you know, thinking you got it figured. You're still around people who can offer you something as far as to help you better yourself. So that's important too. Just want to give man, you Man, I appreciate Man, yeah. I appreciate that, brother. Seriously, uh, from the bottom of my heart, you know, compliments are things that are fuel to keep going to do this shit. Let's just be real. You know, yeah. don't nobody say you're doing a good job. There's no reason to want to keep going forward and doing things. So I'm, I'm super grateful for them words, man, but let's get into it. But those who are new to the show and don't know what it is, I get you caught up on everything that's happening in the Marvel and DC live action cinematic universes. This is barbershop talk for nerds. So what that means is we gonna say some shit. Okay. It might hurt your feelings. And if it does, I gives no fuck. Uh, it's just on, it's on you. Because, like, it's just keeping it real. It's no, everything I say or the said here is not trying to just be belittling or demeaning. It's an opinion. But it's also opinion with, uh, with, 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 with points behind it. You know, the reason there's an opinion about it. It's not just saying, yo, this shit suck. Why does it suck? Because it just suck. Nah, that ain't the thing. That's not happening. So there is you know, a lot to it, but let's kick it off. So I got a little bit of news about Thor, Love and Thunder. Now, one of the things that everybody heard is that we're going to be talking about Valkyrie 
being played okay. by Tessa Thompson, her romance. She's going now. Valkyrie is going to be the king of Asgard wow. first and foremost. They are not going. Valkyrie's not going to be the queen. Valkyrie's going to be the king. But Tessa Thompson talked more recently about Valkyrie's LGBTQ romance in the movie, and she revealed that her and director Taika Waititi would like to go further. Now, this is what she said to the rap, uh, talking about the first openly LGBTQ character. She said, "Quote." Um, Quote, it's totally exciting because she was first before Eternals down. She said, right, quote, it's right. totally exciting. We talk so much about representation, obviously, in the forms of LGBTQIA community. There's still so much work to be done. But if you look at the comics and the canon, there's so many queer characters. It's hard because Tyke and I would even like to go further. But in the context of the movies, there's only so much we can do. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of time invested in love stories in Marvel movies in general. I think that will be a little different on the new Thor, which is exciting. And getting to play a character that is historically not written for someone that looks like me, all of that felt exciting. Now, what do you feel about that? How do you feel about, you know, now the Marvel Universe expanding further into characters who are a reflection of people in real life that have always been here? Yeah. Um, uh, responding to, like, Tessa's excitement for, you know, the further advance, um, the people who feel like you know, excluded from their love stories being shown in the superhero capacity for the LGBTQIA. Did I get all of them? I hate. Uh, hey, bro, I just go LGBT. I just go right. LGBT, and right, y'all, so I go plus. Y'all know what the rest. So, y'all know my. I tell people this real quick, bro. I tell people y'all know my heart. You know, a nigga care, yeah. but you know my heart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's cool. You know, I, I, as long as it doesn't become agenda driven, I think that's the problem. It's like, you know, when you have a comedy or whatever or anything, but when they're trying to just Put that agenda before anything else that's when it's problematic but when they focus on a good story and then it's also just she happens to be this and it feels like it's just a, a, like just the way of the world and not just something that they're trying to shove down our throats it's all about how you know they can digest that into the story for, for her character going into this new one so as long as it's not like like force fed i'm cool with it and i mean listen I, and i have a pitch for who a love interest can be if it's um Who's the singer that uh, Tessa Thompson has been linked with in real life? Uh, Janelle Monet. And Janelle Monet is the girlfriend, and so I would I will buy five tickets, six tickets to go to Thor uh, so. Love, Love and Thunder. So Janelle Monet, if, if that's the surprise cameo we get, I'm I'm in. I think I'm gay for that too. Now, you real quick, I want to touch on something for a lot of people who don't who don't no, get it. Tip. Yeah, it's cool. No, 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 no. It's, it, yeah. I, I hear you. I'm honey with you, but like for people who don't get it. When you say an agenda behind it, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But tell me, tell the people what okay. you mean. Okay, so it's like um, trying to think of a movie that I could compare this to where they were just like shoving it down the throat. So like, okay, damn, I'm trying to respect respectfully. Uh, sometimes in in certain films or television shows, right? You you the the writers they want to emphasize like theme and to, to to do bring in a community that might be marginalized right mm -hmm. but then the execution of it is corny where it's like you don't really want to root for them because it's like you don't really understand why that even had to be included you know yeah, there's yeah. just sometimes there's a way you watch something and you go like oh they didn't really have to like put him in in this scenario for us to understand why she doesn't like like herself or like her family like you know what i mean so as long as it's really like you just it just when you okay it's like when you put a black character in something right mm -hmm. and like we all know that a lot of white movies are superheroes they had the black friend now you can just have the black guy be there and be himself and still contribute into the world of predominantly white characters and it'd be cool but sometimes you force feed a character and make them use like black references or use slang that we probably haven't used in 20 years yeah, and it feels yeah. cheesy now i hate to shit on my dc heads but i'll, I'll this is the best one Arrow had John Diggle. John Diggle is a cool, proud black man. He ain't got to talk about, hey, I'm black. Y'all need to respect, whatever. He doesn't need to say cool shit. He's just a good guy who happens to be black. Now, Flash, uh, the past couple of seasons have added this chess dude, and he's like this black nerd. And I get it, you're trying to also spotlight black nerds, which exist. Mm -hmm. But then they try to make him like this nerd with swag, and it falls flat every time because he's saying shit that we haven't said since 2004. And then it feels like, oh, you're trying to force me, <laughs> black nerd. I don't want that shit. Like, but Diggle is a is a cool Diggle's a cool. Yeah, nerd. I get what you're saying. Now, I get another, another a, a black nerd who was who was an effective black nerd that you didn't mind at all. Like he was just himself and he was funny. 
I'll give Echo Kellum some props on Arrow when they brought him in as Mr. Yep. Terrific. He was a cool black nerd. He had his moments. You could clearly see, like, he's not like Diggle, and he, you know, might not be like, you know, he's not like a, a, a swagged out or whatever person. He's a black nerd, but his nerddom worked in, in everything that he did, and his jokes would hit. It just didn't feel mm-hmm. force-fed, and, you know, much to Echo's credit, if he was improv and stuff, he wasn't using lines that uh, we were using in, like, black TV commercial spots in 2006. <laughs> and so... <laughs> Two completely different black nerds, but one felt force, one felt force fed, and one was just very natural in his element, and he and didn't feel like he was trying to overcompensate for what his character like looked like or what he was. So that's the best way I can respectfully put it. Without no, you know, no, I got, I'm, I'm with you 100 with it, and I, I appreciate the way you broke it down because again, Echo, Echo playing a character who ended up mm-hmm. having a husband, you know, what right. saying? A, a, a gay black nerd, Look, a gay black nerd trouble. superhero. Yeah, you know, yeah. and so you know, again, that's credit to Echo Kellum as an actor because if y'all haven't checked out Grand Crew, that shit's yeah. hilarious, bro. That Shout shit is, them. man, that shit, that show is so dope. All right, the Moon Knight trailer dropped on Monday, bro. Did you see it? I I didn't watch the trailer. I watched those snippet parts. I was meant to watch the trailer, and then you know, life happened. I just, I mean, you by. are a dad, you are a dad yeah. with a new, with a, with a young baby. I but I it. caught some glimpses when they were doing the teaser stuff. I caught, so I caught a little bit of what's going on. So what you think, yeah. from what you saw, you know, I, so what I've learned is that Moon Knight is kind of like DC's somewhat black, the Batman in a sense. Yes, he is. Very similar. Um, the costumes look really cool. I thought, it are you familiar really, with, so you're not yeah, familiar with bit. Moon Knight as a character. Not his like or not his origin and his source okay. material, but like I understand what he is. He's a, he's also a billionaire, vigilante in a way, and um, you know. But he but he, his power is probably a little more mystical, right? With the moon, yes, from the uh, God Kanchu. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But I think Oscar Isaac is a, is a great uh, casting choice, and I, I feel like we're gonna see him kick some ass, and uh, it looks badass. And I think they're gonna have like a mental health aspect to his character. Like I can see their, you know. Um, like with his psychology, that's going to be a, a oh yeah yeah into his yeah because he, he has a life. he has yeah. DID disassociative identity disorder so okay, he has cool. multiple personalities so you okay, start to see go. that in the trailer you see that the character we're first introduced to is his Stephen Grant personality but at some point he gets a phone call and a woman was like oh my god Mark where's you where have you been and he was right. like why are you calling me Mark because his real name is Mark Specter so Mark uh-huh. Specter is a mercenary. Now, this trailer has hit 75 million views in 24 hours. And, wow. you know, I think, honestly, I, I agree that, like, Oscar Isaac was a good casting choice. Of course, yeah. there was a little bit of the uh, somewhat controversy because he isn't uh, fully Jewish, if I'm not mistaken. His mother is Jewish, so he has Jewish blood in him. Whatever I would have them, it's broken down. But I'm excited for it. Ethan Hawke looks amazing. Like, okay. Ethan Hawke looks evil. You know, Who's some he people have been the, like, he's playing his villain. He's his villain. Now we have David said directly if he's either uh, Randall Specter, his brother Shadow Knight, or if he's the Sun God, or who is he? So we don't know as much. But again, it's a Disney Plus series dropping right. March thirtieth. I'm here for it. Uh, but with that, where, where's Moon Knight all... set? Where is he set? Like, where's the? Um... What do you mean? Where, where does he live? Like, where is the show setting? Like, so I don't know if they're doing it all in London or okay. Egypt. Or if they're doing like New York going overseas, I don't know exactly how it's gonna do. Gotcha. Um, but in some sad news connected to Moon Knight, Gaspar Gaspard uh, Uliel, who was an award French known actor, he was known as the face of the popular Chanel cologne, and he's supposed to appear in the upcoming Moon Knight. He died this Wednesday as a uh-huh. result of a skiing accident. He was thirty-seven. Oh, now man. he. He was in a Savoie's region's Rosaria ski area when the accident occurred. That is crazy, man. It's very I sad to hear that. Condolences to his family. I want to make sure we sent that out. Here's some other news, man. Let's go. Daredevil, his viewership yeah. on Netflix has spiked since Spider-Man No Way Home. They wow. say the numbers of people, because Charlie Cox, spoiler fucking alert, appears in No Way Home. <laughs> People have gone back to watch the Daredevil series. Here's the crazy part. Before No Way Home had dropped, I had just started rewatching it again. Guilty. I did, I did season three rewatch. I did season three. That's the exact yeah. season I did too. I did season three again. So good. So, uh, so good. I was cool. I was like, yo. So, I mean, again, you know, we're all waiting to see 
when do we see Charlie Cox next? I think we might see him as She-Hulk, if I had to take a guess. Oh, I, I, I was hearing it was uh, Echo, the Echo spinoff. Or more so Echo, because, well, a lot of people think Echo because they've gotten writers from Daredevil and Punisher to write the series and Wilson and Vincent D'Onofrio's Wilson Fisk will be back. So there's a possibility, but again, when we're talking that series echo as well as She-Hulk, because we're talking lawyers. So we might see, we might see Matt Murdock in a small piece, not a, you know, say not a major thing. Now if we see him in a major thing, we might see him in echo. I wouldn't be surprised because a deaf anti-hero of sorts, a blind Mm. superhero, I think cool. it'll be a, it'll be great for what it can bring forth. So I'm hoping to see that. I would uh, love that. What was you saying? I would love that. I think um, you know, like we said, we both watched season three of Daredevil after the seeing Charlie uh, Charlie Cox's character. In oh, I did it before. I did it before. Oh, did it before. Okay, I did it after. But um, it, it made you go like, yeah, I need we we need uh, at least Daredevil from one of the four, you know, Defenders or Marvel. Like I don't know what's the future of the other characters, but at least. Daredevil Punisher, and maybe I give a pass on Jessica Jones to come. Here's the thing: I don't think. I mean, if you can get, all, I don't of think them, we get all of them in, but you know, I don't think we get in the Punisher. I don't think we get in John Barthol as the Punisher. He said he doesn't want to do it because it'll be a watered down version of what he was doing in on Netflix. Yeah, you because I felt that was one of the things, and I know it was, you know, I'm sure you did tons of Spider Man talk, but like, uh, I'm sorry, in um, Hawkeye, when you saw Kingpin appear on Hawkeye and just how that last episode played out. I t- I was totally like, yeah, this this is not Netflix uh, Kingpin. Like, he just was getting bumped up too much and sprayed across the streets and arrow tricks and like he's wearing a Hawaiian shirt. I'm like, yo, this is just like this is this is a <laughs> this is a, ki- a diet Kingpin we getting. So no, it's I, not. I don't think we, I don't think no, we it's not. I, no, I, it's I, not. I, okay, go ahead. Yo, the the Hawaiian shirt is taken directly from the comics. I I know that's real, but it's like if I if you if you giving me black suit to white suit gangster for three hardcore body seasons, right? It's hard for me for just in forty two minutes of one episode to just understand it. In a couple scenes, he has his Hawaiian shirt. Like I, you had to ease me into Hawaiian shirts. That's all I'm saying. Get fuck out here! I just think it's like, hey, I'm just taking a white shirt out the gate. Like, nigga, you you got to start off with goddamn it a polo. Yeah. You can't just go into a Hawaiian shirt. And, and he was just getting blasted around too much for me. Like, it just you know, like when you looked at the Netflix show, like those three seasons, you only saw Kingpin go on done a couple times, and he was just getting murked too much in that in that Hawkeye finale. But for me was he like, though? Yeah. But the man took an arrow to the chest, bro, and he did. struck and he it. got ran over. Uh yes, you have to hit this motherfucker. Allegedly, you gotta hit this. You know. <laughs> Again, comic book act in the comics, he's right. shot by yeah, Echo, right. and right. he comes right. back with bandages on his eyes. So, like a lot of people complained about that, and they were like, "This." I'm like, "Yo, y'all don't realize this shit yeah. is precedent already in the comics. Like it's set already. So it's like you can't because I think the, the problem for me." When people have those, you know, again, they're, they're rifle qualms and shit like that. Right, the thing right. for me is you got Kingpin and you got the same guy you wanted to play Kingpin. Yeah, yeah. Be yeah. happy. Because everybody was like, yo, we want to get Kingpin. You got him, right? You got Kingpin. But like I said, you also got the dude you want to play Kingpin. So, yeah. Okay, but it's like if you, if you okay, it's like if you make, you, you cook me a great meal, right? And I like it's great. We have the ambiance of it is dope. And then you you find the same ingredients when you come to my place and you cook it again. But I, I only got paper plates. You know, it, it don't feel the Nigga, same. Nigga, stop! <laughs> did you really just use the paper? You know, I only got paper <laughs> plates. You know what I'm saying? Nah, Filet mignon, paper it's plates. Same meal, nigga. But we just got paper plates right here, nigga. You ain't you got, got, no you ain't got but, shine. Yo, I, <laughs> but as long as they got them guys, but I understand Burton on, you know, if he's not, if they're not going to keep at least Punisher where they are, then maybe yeah, he probably shouldn't come back. But hey, we got Daredevil, we got Vincent, a Kingpin, so I'll take that. I'm, I'm good with that. The, the, the writing will be good. The characters are going to do their thing. Yeah, I trust the writers on that. Now, a lot of people have been saying this in this way, and I'm going to say it, but then I'm going to spin it off. People have been saying Black Panther 2 can't catch a break because Black Panther Wakanda Forever has had to halt production again as Mm. Lupita Nyong'o and others have tested positive for COVID. Now, yeah, so they say, uh, according to The Hollywood Reporter, several cast and crew members have tested positive for COVID, but don't panic. Work is going to resume later on this week. Now, she did 
because remember, at first you had Letitia Wright who got injured on with a stunt gone wrong. Yeah, she had yeah. to heal. Right. Then you had, uh, then you had, you know, all the COVID stuff, but also Lapita had it and she couldn't do the stuff for three five five. She's supposed to do press for the three five five movie. So uh-huh. I don't know if those two are intertwined. But again, just to also, give her more time off. Okay. Yeah, but also here's a bigger thing, nigga. They shooting Black Panther Wakanda Forever in Atlanta. Georgia act like there's not a panorama going on. Georgia yeah. act like niggas ain't really dying in these streets. So like, yeah, it, it's one of like, these you like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, are they still gonna make their release date at this point, or is probably gonna push back? I think again, the release date, it, it only depends. I think the release date really factors into how long it takes you to edit. And again, we don't know how much they need to shoot. We don't know. Oh, That's yeah, the thing. Yeah. We don't know. We don't know what their shooting schedule is. We don't know what they need right. to get done. Again, when you have principal photography has got to be done, then you got to come back for reshoots because reshoots are always a thing that happens no That's matter sorry. what. You know, I, I, people be like, oh, man, they doing reshoots. They doing reshoots. You be like, yo, shut the fuck up. Reshoots yeah. and secondary photography are a thing that consistently happen all the damn time. Uh, so let me time. see. Let me see. So I got that. That I hope they get it together. Yeah. I, I mean, I want this movie to come out. All right. So that's all I got on Marvel. Wasn't a lot of news in Marvel this week. Batman okay. new. Let's get into DC news. And let's go this way first. Let's go. All right. Let's do. Yeah, let's do this first. The Batman. It's runtime has been announced. Two hours and 47 minutes without credits. Give it to me, baby. I have been one vocal to be like, why the fuck do we need a two, almost three hour Batman movie? Now, I know people are going to say, and you probably listening to this, and and Nick, you might be thinking, people like, yo, you sat through a three hours Avengers movie. I'm like, that's not the same fucking thing because Avengers (laughs) Endgame is the culmination of 20 something movies. Okay. You cannot compare the same thing. I do not need to keep seeing the beginning of this nigga as Batman for three hours. Yeah, if they shoot his parents one more time on screen. That's what I'm saying. I don't want to see this nigga's mom and daddy die again. At least with Snyder, he just did it in the credits. So it was like out the way. But like, I don't even want to acknowledge it. Like, I don't even want a flashback of one. I don't want one, one little trinkling of seeing his parents dying. You know what I'm saying? Um, we got almost bro. a three-hour Batman film. I, how could you not love that, bro? I easily, nigga. I don't need. Let me see. Easily. Let me tell you something, fam. I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm of the mindset that a movie can be two and a half, three hours when it is built up to it, when it rises up, when it builds up. You know what I'm saying? If you this was a second or third movie in in a, a Reeves trilogy, then right. yes, two and a half. I'm not gonna argue. I'm not gonna argue you right. But what I'm saying is, this is out the gate. How much do I need to keep seeing sad ass Bruce Wayne deal, not deal, not going to therapy, not dealing with his parents dying? Now this nigga want to beat up mentally ill and homeless people in the goddamn city. This nigga is Batman is a sociopath. The people do not want to right. realize this. You know, women always say men would rather do this than go to therapy. Niggas would rather fight crime than go to therapy. That's what Batman <laughs> is. That's a fact. Uh, niggas would rather fight totally. crime than go to therapy. I wanna, I wanna take care of all the crackheads who hang out around the routes rather than deal with my <laughs> deal with my own motherfucking issue, nigga. Issue. You don't go talk to some goddamn body and not just Alfred. So, but again, I know it's like, yeah, people like some people are even going, well, this is the first solo Batman movie we've had in years, and I understand right. that. That's true. But again, and I mean, and again, when I. When I say when I say I don't want to see his parents die again, I feel the same fucking way about seeing Uncle Ben die from Spider Man. I don't need to see it no more. Yeah, yeah, I, it is pretty think, much established. I think what Reeves, because Reeves is you know he's a different type of director than you know different from Zach, different from um, you know uh, Tim Burton, different from Christopher Christopher Nolan. I think, you know, what he wants to do is just set up a big world. You know what I'm saying? And it's mm-hmm. like other Batmans, I mean, you. I guess the Christopher Nolan one, they were always two hours and changed and the last one was longer, right? The first one was like two hours and they kept getting longer each one. But you, you get what I'm saying? They yeah, grow yeah. in time. That's not a problem. Also, here's the issue I do have, and I, a lot of people have mentioned this when Reeves said, this is quote unquote, a dark and grittier take on Batman. And everybody's been like, bro, the Nolan movies exist. 
The Nolan movies exist. Those are Batman Begins is a dark and gritty take. And by the way, as we're recording this, the Rams are whooping the fuck out of the Buccaneers. They're going home this year. All right. Bro, it is 27 to 3. Wow. It is over for Tom Brady. But um but I digress. I I, I digress. (laughs) But again, it's just it's just one of those things where it's like, I'm gonna enjoy the movie, I'm gonna see the movie regardless. Right, because that's what I got to do. I'm gonna see the movie regardless. But how much exposition do we need in the world of characters we know? I mean, one thing you got to prove is you got to prove to us that this Pattinson is Batman is gonna be decent, I guess, and good to move forward. I I think you can do that because, like, you know, when you watch like the animated films or whatever that, like. Especially when he's dealing with Selena Kyle, and I'm not saying this because because I'm you know a dude trying to sexualize him, but I think we're gonna see this time we're gonna see the Bruce that really like indulges with prostitutes who's just slumming, who maybe he's on dates and then he you know he fights crime. And I think what also they said that they're gonna do different than other Batman movies is really make him a detective. So I think we're that's gonna see fine him in, in the suit a lot more, but actually like doing like detective work and trying to figure stuff out. Um, and it's not just gonna be like something big catastrophe happens and he runs to the crime scene and you know goes in someone tries to fight and i think there's, there's going to be a little bit of a combination of both and i i i just want to see how they can you know how they're going to flesh the world out like i think we're going to get more time with other characters i think he probably has two villains in this movie i can't imagine them doing three hours for one villain he has well, two. Like, you know the riddler is the main villain and then you have yeah. the penguin mm-hmm. uh the riddler is is taking matt reeves is giving him a zodiac killer type feel so right. you have that. You got the penguin. You're supposedly getting the Joker introduced in this one. Okay. Uh, oh, so three, yeah, three and one. Hopefully. Well, I don't know if you're much. gonna get. I don't know if you're gonna get the Joker in full, but I think you're gonna get an introduction right. to him. But okay, okay Joker, it is Joker, what really? it is. Dang. Yep. Barry Cohegan, Cohegan, Cohogan. How is it pronounced? Pardon my, pardon my butchering of it. He was in Eternals and he was in uh, Dunkirk. He's supposedly the Joker. Oh, interesting. But um, again. Selena okay, Kyle yes. might have more, more screen time, too. I think she's going to get more for her character. Okay, so here's the thing about that. We kind of got the same thing with Selena Kyle getting more time in The Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. Right? Now... It, it was know, quick scenes, though. Yeah, fair, fair. I mean, again... Like, go ahead. One episode, she's robbing somebody. The next one, her girlfriend is doing shit and then slapping her on the wrist. Then her girlfriend comes back and, like, you know, I got some jewelry. What was and then she's like watching TV. Then it's like cut back. Like everything was just really quick to her, and then then like back to the dark. It was kind of weird. <laughs> I think we're gonna like see her more as a as a you know three dimensional person, as well as cat you know Catwoman. You probably have some so maybe she gets some solo scenes of doing stuff where, but then it's connected to the overall story. Like I I don't know I I, I want to kind of see what, what what can be done here. I'm, I mean I'm, I do I'm, and I again I don't want them to reinvent the wheel. All right I ain't right, gonna, no, I, do no, saying, no. I don't want them to do that. But it, again, the detective, I think that's the one thing everyone's wanted. The closest we've gotten to any detective shit was 89 Batman with Keaton when he was yeah. doing the shit about figuring out how the, the Joker was making the chemicals together. That was the closest thing yeah. about the detective thing. So, yes, to get yeah. a movie where he's a detective, I understand. But if his detective skills take over eight over three hours to figure out how to catch one nigga, it's a problem. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's move on, man. Peacemaker. Right. Have you seen a recent episode of Peacemaker? I haven't started Peacemaker yet. How, how do you like it so far? Bro. I'm missing out? I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get You are this. hella... Mi- Peacemaker is arguably one of the best DC shows, period. Like that? John Cena has done something that nobody expected him to do. Like, we saw what he did in the Suicide Squad. He was we really like, good. okay, he was good. He takes really his good. good to great in Peacemaker. Okay. In his own series. I highly... I don't want to spoil it for you, man. Yeah, yeah, please don't, because you like to spoil. Jay will spoil. Jay will spoil your birthday surprise. He was. <laughs> I'll tell your you, mama. I'll tell, tell your mama, mama about the cake. Yeah, that shit was good too. It was vegan chocolate. I didn't even know they could make that. Uh, but not. Um, I, I, what I liked from Suicide Squad, I thought Peacemaker was a really fun character, and I hear that this one is, is HBO is dark with this with their Peacemaker show well that's is james gunn it's it's still it's it's still more james gunn yeah it's still james gunn so you're gonna get that humor you're gonna get that dark feel Uh, but it 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 puts peacemaker in a whole other light and it's mm -hmm. worth the light they put him in and vigilante is amazing 
Uh, Danielle Brooks is out of bio, is phenomenal. You have is that um, a hero out of bio? Uh, she works on Peacemaker's team. She's working okay. on Peacemaker. I, I caught Vigilante, and, and I, I'm guessing this is the the truer Vigilante version, not the one on Arrow. Even though the one on Arrow was great, but like Vigilante. Yeah, this is okay. Yeah, this is uh he needs therapy. He needs therapy as well. Again, men would rather I, fight crime than the, go to therapy. therapy. But yeah, uh, man, people need to understand that disclaimer. <laughs> so uh with that, let's go it. to the let's go to the last story I got in DC News, man. Did you hear about Josh Wheaton finally running his mouth? Oh yeah, he dropped some M-bombs, apparently, right? Oh, I didn't know he dropped in bombs. Whoa. Was that on. him? Yeah. Or oh, it was something with Gal Gadot. And so he told, so yeah, he's finally spoke, given his side of the story okay, after there two plus years, right? So the issue with Gal Gadot, so Gal Gadot, some things about him going to, uh, he was saying things about her, and he basically said Gal misunderstood him because English isn't her first language. Nigga, what? Nigga, what? Because it's not her first language? <laughs> He called. So he called cyborg a nigger and said, "Don't worry about what I just told you. That, that's not what." I, that's not what I <laughs> well, actually, I would have. He told. He said Ray Fisher is a weak actor. Ah. Now here's the thing about this. I was on Twitter because again, I didn't. Ch- <laughs> no, no, oh, Whedon okay, didn't yeah. hire you. Got to remember, oh, okay. Zach right, Snyder Zach, hired. Remember Zach. Right, right, right. He right. came right. And that's the thing. So people were like, well, well, we knew what type of actor he was. No, he didn't. Whedon right. was brought on to finish the project. Whedon didn't cast this crew. Whedon, didn't, Whedon was just doing some reshoots and adding a lighter tone. So because mm-hmm. remember, one of uh, Ray Fisher's complaints was he lightened his skin up. But Zach, Josh Whedon was like, yo, I lightened up the whole fucking movie. movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even Batman has had glitter on his suit. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And so, <laughs> but people were kind of upset that people were upset that him saying Ray Fisher was a weak actor. And this is the only thing I said. Like, look, all the other shit that came out of Josh Whedon's mouth in that interview and everything he said, I, I said it on Blurred, so I will openly say it again. He's a grade A asshole, no doubt. I will continue to say he's an asshole, right? But yeah. as a director, he is entitled to say right. he feel, he is entitled to say he feels an actor is weak. Yeah, yeah, and he didn't watch any of uh, Ray Fisher's theater plays because that's what he was in theater before he died. That was his first right. role. So yeah, in a way, he wasn't watching him. He's just going off of what he's, you know, doing when he when he came on when he came on a board. So as a, I agree, as a director, if you don't if you're not feeling somebody, you're and you're entitled to tell the actor, hey, you're giving me nothing or whatever. Um, you know, it's all about the context of whatever that situation was. But I don't think he 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 he's taking his lumps for other shit that he did. And what, and he didn't. It, he shouldn't have had to worry about apologizing for calling somebody a weak actor. But to say, "Oh, English is not your first language," that's why you don't understand what I'm saying. That's just grade A white privilege disrespect. You know, and he said that uh, he was treated like shit by some of the cast members and things like that. But again, I, I again, I, yeah. I believe I will always stand on. He's an asshole. Whedon's an yeah. asshole. Is a given. The shit he said about why he had to sleep with women. And when he was on Buffy, he was like, I felt powerless. I had to have sex with all these women. Control your dick, fam. Like, you can't just be saying you, you couldn't He got, do he got shit. Sarah Michelle Gellar? No, he didn't get Sarah Michelle Gellar. Uh, uh, he got that. He was fucking, he he was fucking PAs and shit like that. <laughs> he was out here fucking PAs and doing all the other shit. He was like, because what he says is, when he was growing up in high school, he could never get women like that, right? Uh, so yeah, he could never get go. women. He could never get women. And so because now he's in position and women flock to him. Right, right. He, you know, this is what he can do. And I was like, I, I get it, bro. But because I know a lot of dudes that are like that, like, yo, you women never gave me any attention. And yeah. now all of a sudden you all, you know what I'm saying, you game for it. I get it in that regard. But, bro, you should have never said a motherfucking thing. For somebody who's directed, like, several superhero films, how does he not understand the, the most powerful ideal of great power comes with great responsibility? Nigga, no, you didn't drop the <laughs> Uncle Ben. <laughs> no, I you did, I know didn't drop the gym, my nigga. With great That's, power comes great responsibility, yeah, nigga. Mind, every time you walk on the lot, you motherfucker. <laughs> I mean, but that is the thing. You are in. You are the person in power. You are in control. Yeah. So, like, yes, you might be able to fuck people that under your, you know, that are under you, that are your yeah. subordinates. 
don't mean that you should fuck your subordinates. Like, look, there, yeah. and, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to be keeping the buck as I always do on here. Always. There are women in power that are fuck men under them. Don't mean they should fuck them either. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. Look, I understand yeah. everybody, and especially we're talking to all people, always consenting adults, et cetera, et cetera. But everybody ain't supposed to fuck everybody. That's true. Some, 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 some entanglements need to stay away from each other. Stay away from each other. You know, yeah. which Jada Pickett Smith would have thought about that with August Alcina. But right. <laughs> drop a Jada hey, reference here. Can't, can't, yeah, cannot drop entanglements without a Jada reference. Right. Can't, can't drop that without it. But again, it's, <laughs> it's you know, you know, people say it like, though. yeah. That here's the thing, he's gonna time. work again, and people are like, he's never gonna work again. Joss He'll Whedon work. is already working on projects, he's What's just not openly working on projects. No, he's uh-huh. just not openly working on projects. Gotcha. No studio can take the hit of having Joss Whedon's name attached to them right now. Mm-hmm. Yo, they are they are whooping his ass on his field. Yeah, studio but, uh, we gotta cool down with this guy for a minute. So, yeah, but again, to say, I like I said, people are so mad at shit like this and 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 again, Matt, I'm I'm going back to the just the Ray Fisher comment more than anything else. Yeah. More than anything else, just the Ray Fisher shit. He is entitled as a director, just as a coach. An inter- a coach is entitled to say a player is playing like trash. A manager is entitled to say an employee is working like trash. They are all allowed to do these things. Now there is a level of professional decorum. Now we you know as a recent the recent couple of years we've heard about. We've heard about how, you know, there are some directors who go and they're hostile to on set. They're yelling at everybody and this, that, and third. And, and now we're, we're, you know, now we're saying it's a no-no. You know, yeah. when you have directors, what the fuck are you doing? Right. You can't berate get, any people anymore. You can't berate Wait. people, which you should probably shouldn't have been doing in the first fucking place. Let's, let's, let's clear I that mean... Out. It's it's tough because I'm we all because you know I know you got me you're a little older than me but we're still from a generation where like yeah you know I like to somebody who got into me because granted maybe hear my films maybe it made me buckle a little bit but at some point if you have a competitive edge in you it brings out the best in you and you want to you know meet that mark so that you can get the best out of your performance but some people their 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 mentalities ain't built for that so they just shut down. some people just shut down like they can't take a person who's just yelling and uh yes. you know degrading them or in a sense making them feel degraded or, or 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 not valid or worthy and i think there's just a fine line in that so uh the the the, the coaches like you said the bosses the directors they have to find a they have to find a a, a more clever way of trying to get their point across but i don't mm-hmm. think they should take out the competitive fire and passion that is what they're trying to also bring which sometimes does bold great results like absolutely you know it doesn't always work but but one the, the, but we do have the examples of where the the bobby knights the uh you know the uh joe jackson's uh you yeah. know when they when they when they get in that ass you know they <laughs> they, 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 they they breed champions and, and superstars yeah you know what i'm saying there might be some dramas and, and some some tor- some mental torture in there too and some therapy to help them work through that but at least they ain't going to fight crime. Anyway, you as we're saying, <laughs> you got them streets of Gotham City and Bloodhaven. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we'll see how everything else plays itself out. But listen, that's all of the stories I got for this week. I'm gonna go over to the emails I got at the Matt Titan cool. email. You can you can hit me up, Matt Titan Podcast at gmail.com, Matt Titan Podcast at gmail.com. You can also call the hotline if you want to hear your own voice. 818-276-6947, 818-276-6947. Let me go to some of these emails. I got a bunch of them, so we're going to go through them. First one is from Joshua Alicia with the uh, subject She-Hulk. says, hey, Jay, okay. glad to hear your pod is back more regularly as it helps the commute during the work, during work far more enjoyable. That's of love. all the newer MCU-related content coming out, I'm most looking forward to She-Hulk and went down a rabbit hole of reading every comic run I could find of her on Marvel's comics app. It got me thinking about how the MCU tries to tie stuff together, and there's a particular run where Waller, Walters is a bounty hunter and her partner is a scroll. Do you think that they could possibly? Do you think it's possible they could try and tie her into the soft launching of Secret Invasion with an arc like that, considering the series coming at some point? Hope all is well. I did not know about that. Oh. Um, as the bounty hunter and a scroll, look. That is definitely possible because I think what this is going to do, what Secret Invasion is going to do, is mm-hmm. going to let us know a lot of people we thought were humans 
aren't yeah. or weren't. Yeah. Now, if you do a scroll as a bounty hunter, I think that'll be probably a second season because I think this season yeah. more is going to be about her being a lawyer to becoming She Hulk. How she has, you know, how Bruce gives her the blood transfusion, how she becomes the character. I think that's more we're going to get this season with it. Yeah. I don't think we'll go into like a full, uh, I don't think we'll go into like full story arcs yet. Yeah, that's season two kind of material because, yeah, she has to get into the origin intro. We got to first, the audience has to just get to know who she is because she hope yes. is not popular to the to the masses yet. So we got to just get hip to how she became and the early struggles and learning how to juggle the life. And, like, you know, obviously we got Hulk and Bruce, uh, Bruce Banner is going to be kind of like the mentor and maybe, like, one main villain who's a threat. But, like, yeah, you're not going to see her be somebody who tackles down different things till down the line. But the scrolls are here. We we, we, we know that. The, the scrolls are on Earth. So why yeah, wouldn't we've been knowing about scrolls since Captain Marvel. Yeah. So why wouldn't that be a possible into Secret Evasion, which would lead to, I guess, Avengers 5 down the line? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. So I think... So I don't think we're getting Avengers in, C in Phase 4. I think we don't get them in Phase 5, but I don't think we right. get regular Avengers either. I believe we're getting more than likely young Avengers. I don't think the we're new, getting... The new team, yeah. Yeah, we're getting... We're not getting this massive team up of, like, all the characters like we got in fucking uh, Endgame. We're getting no, a it'll new it'll be like group. the first Avengers, yeah. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. So let's go on to the next one. This is from my homegirl, Jolene, uh, one of the members of my supervillain squad. Uh, she says, cool. listen to the question. She says, hey, Jay listening to the latest episode, and of course, it's great to hear you back. But I have a common question about the MCU and mutants and how there's no good solution. If mutants come from another universe or are created by the snap energy or have never existed before, then the story is already not going to be that great. The whole point of mutants is that they've been around and are the next step in human evolution. And if they're just created by some other event that kills the whole premise, then they're just enhanced individuals. Them having always been there, but never getting involved is just what the Eternals did and will annoy everyone. The best, and not to say good solution, would probably be they've been there all the time and Professor X keep, keeps erasing everyone's memories. Like I said, I don't think there's any satisfying solution, but that's the best I can think of. What are your thoughts? This has been a good question because this has been something I've yeah. been arguing about for the longest about I don't think the um I don't know I don't know if there's a good way honestly to introduce the mutants to the to the world I don't because the thing is the X Men cannot be a group already they can't they can, yeah you can't do that because the Avengers would have known about them or, also a group in upstate New York when a bunt when an alien fucking invasion happens and does nothing that is a problem that is a problem you get what I'm saying. Yeah. So you have so to go for, completely origin with this when they bring these guys in. Yeah. See, and again, in order to do that, that ha excuse me, that has to be a phase somewhat within itself. Yeah. Because how do you, again, like like Jolene said, there really isn't a, a a good way to do this because they comp they complicate every the only way this works. The only way this works is in Multiverse of Madness now, because that's, I think, your last effort to bring last them chance, in, yeah. your last real chance to bring them in, even though I don't want them, and I'll say it why I don't in a minute, but in Multiverse of Madness, in the process of Wanda screwing with the multiverse and Strange screwing with the multiverse, they combine the universes of now, there is a universe of other individuals called mutants, and now they're all in this world existing together. Here's the problem I have, though. The moment you introduce them, and I keep saying this to everybody, the moment you introduce mutants, you say it in any way, fan, fans of the MCU are not going to be, be, be satisfied with the regular MCU timeline they have set going. They are going to want to know, when are we getting the X-Men in full? Instead of letting everything else play out like it's supposed to play out, right? Yeah. Let the I feel like this. Let these two phases that we've got set up let them play out right yeah then phase six can be mutants x-men all that but the problem is if they even if they're introduced in doctor strange and they don't they're not brought in they're not officially brought in until phase six you still got people going well shit how when long? are we gonna get them when how long till we get them how long till we get them how long till we get them and it's like come on that'd be man, the second like half of the decade yeah 
and also, you know, look, let me. I, I'm gonna pull this up real quick. Let me see if I can pull it up real quick. I want to see. Can I, can I share um, what I was? Yeah, what I was, yeah. You I go ahead and do that way. while I'm while I'm. Yeah, go ahead and do what you do when I pull this up. Yeah, I I thought the uh, the snap was a was a window there too. A lot of people felt like maybe the snap could be the reason, like that triggered something or sparked something within the universe. Uh, and I think what you could do is if you're not like uh, you're not basically having these people be kept around for like years and years of their powers. Maybe the snap was the start. So it was like they were living with this for the three to five years where the movies have been happening since the snap. And then there's another event that happens that like that awakes it in, in the, the chosen mutant system. Like there's like a like something is chosen and like it, it, it reactivates, but they were like it was laying in with within people after the snap when everything was brought back. And then in the years since they were functioning, but like everybody is like dealing with a with a certain uh, uh, twitch or whatever, but it's not manifesting until like, you know, like what they say, like a, 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 a certain trauma. And then everybody kind of comes out with their power. So like Professor X is normal, normal, but then after the snap, he starts having little, like little tidbits of visions or being able to change people's minds or do whatever. Like everybody is fighting a little bit of what's going on since the snap. And then maybe it comes out by like the fifth year or sixth year, like you said, when we're into phase five and and then their powers are really starting to manifest like it but it starts from when the snap happens something like that so so here's the thing so now i can i'm gonna i'm gonna go i'm gonna uh draw back a little bit of my statement here's why okay now i'm looking at phase five phase five as of right now is set for these movies black panther wakanda forever november of this year all right four, Uh, four is almost over four is almost done Oh. Uh, hold on. Let me see. Let me go back to it. So, okay, Black Panther: Wakanda Forever, November this year. Guardians of the Galaxy: The Holiday Special comes out this year. The Marvels, Captain Marvel two, is next year. Guardians mm-hmm. of the Galaxy three next year. Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum Mania next year. Blade next year. Right? That is fine. That means in twenty twenty four we can start looking towards mutants and shit like that. If that they're, if they're introduced X-Men. now, right, yeah, yeah. then we can do that. And then you still got because then you still got Fantastic Four. You get yeah. what I'm saying? You still got Fantastic Four. So it doesn't have to be six, seven years. Now, I can I see you know, three, two, now, three. Right. In six, seven years, we probably can get what every fucking body I keep hearing wants to hear. Yo, we can probably get Avengers versus X-Men, which mm. I mean, yeah, I trust it. It could happen. It can go well. But I would like rather, see, right? But I would rather see them together. Like, okay, if Avengers, if, this is my thing. If X Men versus Avengers is the precursor to the next gigantic team up, you yeah. get what I'm saying? Like, they got to fight each other first. Then they right. decide they all need each other to beat somebody. I'm good threat. with that. That's, but that's I what think, I want to see. Yeah. But again, I agree with you with the Eternals. I I said that when the Eternals had when Eternals was talked about before they even dropped, I was like, you can say the snap not only woke them up out of who they sleep was as Eternals, but also made triggered radiation and cosmic mutations because the way Rocky kept saying cosmic energy, cosmic energy. So again, I I think I, I the Multiverse it. of Madness is going to be the best bet. Best you what? Bet. Yeah. You when, finally I saw saw it? Eternal, when I finally saw Eternal, I texted you about it, and I was just like, oh, it was decent, but then, yeah, the thing, oh, we just laid dormant and watched them because we, we didn't want to interfere. It's just like, oh, God. No, it isn't we didn't want it. They were told they couldn't. So, told they you couldn't. Gotta, Sorry. For the great, dog, when they believed in that purpose, yeah. yeah. Dog, when you got this big-ass celestial that tells yeah. you don't do shit, what you gonna do? Um, yeah, I'm not gonna try them. I'm, I'm not gonna try this big ass nigga. He, he, no, nah, bro. Hey, man. Hey, bro. You know what? He's a big I'm, ass half nigga. He's not even fully formed. <laughs> all right, this big. No, I'm talking about not even the nigga that was in the ground. I'm talking about the actual other one that cre- that helped create them. Like, you know what? Right, right. We good, fam. You know what? You, yeah. I'm sorry. I fucked up. I fucked up. All right. I got one more email. It is from Alex Green. Subjects blue and gold. It says, hey, Jay, long time listener here. Love what you do here and on Blurred in the Hood with Winston. Thank you so much. Uh, send my appreciation to Winston as well. Says, uh, here's my question. I've been doing some reading on Blue Beetle, 
and was wondering what do you think with the movie supposedly coming out next year will we get michael john carter as booster gold these have, these two have quickly become my favorite dc characters here as of late excuse me Love to hear your thoughts on this. Continue to grind and work hard, brother. P.S. Do you happen to have any of your paintings still available? Well, as far as some paintings that I got available, I got an Incredible Hulk. I have a Rugrats. The majority of stuff that I have is gone, but I got like three or four left. So those are. Uh, those are. But uh, it says, Alex, best regards, Alex Glean. Uh, Alex, thank you so much. Now, here's the thing with Booster Gold. Greg Berlanti, who's responsible for the Arrowverse, was supposed to be doing a Booster Gold movie. Right. And I mean, that was in development. That was in development. And no one knows what happened with that. Like, that was supposed to be a thing. Like, so, you know, I'm, I'm excited for the Blue Beetle. I'm excited we're getting the Jaime Reyes one. That's the one I think we deserve to get. Uh, I thought it was yeah, coming. Sure. But Booster Gold was supposed to be a thing. So I don't know if they're going to go back to it or if they're going to let it go. Um, I don't know if the idea of a hero for hire for them in DC is too much like, well, they had heroes for hire with Luke Cage and Iron Fist. You know, I don't know if they'll feel that, but your thoughts. Yeah, I, I think um, Booster Gold is, he's cool, but he's just not high values. Like, so I think he's better off in the, in the TV space. Like the way you kind of make him peacemaker pop. I think that's the way they should do it with HBO Max or um, yeah. I think, or CW, I, I hate to say it, but I, I, they're in a state of transition because the superhero kind of, the, the, the champagne run is kind of over or it's a little, it's fading a little bit. And mm -hmm. I don't think Booster Gold is the type of character that can get momentum back on the network side. So I feel like he's better in the HBO Max uh, limited series capacity. I don't think he's, he's popular enough to go, people will go run to the box office to go see him. Let me ask you this. Or maybe an animated movie. Do it Like they, they haven't done any animated movies of, in the booster gold or whatever he rarely appears even in that so maybe that's the best way to do it kind of get him get a little buzz going mm -hmm. do an animated film and then that might spark interest to whether we want to adapt live action you know but let me ask you this though you just said he's not a high margin high value uh character i think that's the best reason when you take him and i think that's the best thing nowadays we we we're, we're done I think we should we're, we should, we should be pretty much done doing all the established. You've been yeah. known about these characters. This is the time now. You you go out on a ledge and you do these lesser known characters. Marvel Studios is proving you can do it if you just tell a good story. Yes, right. Yes. That's all you got to do is just tell a good story. So Booster Gold can work. Tell a good story. I think because Warner Brothers doesn't have the best track record in the movies and they do better with television I, I that's why i feel like it'll benefit boost the goal because you people get to spend more time with that character as opposed to the two-hour movie where you know they're trying to set this up and make you give a damn mm -hmm. whether it's universe building or not or standalone but i feel like dc dc has done a better job in executing for a character on in television space so i think you, he would benefit from being on TV where he gets a chance to develop. People get to learn more about him and the heroes around him and the team around him. Like, I don't think you can do that. Set up like a, a three. I don't think you can set up a trilogy around Booster Gold when they're still trying to figure out their Justice League, their Flash, another Batman. Like, you know what I mean? They're just trying to get. They're just trying to get some hits. So I think you yeah. hit a hit a hit a couple of doubles on TV, and then you know maybe he can grow into something more down the line as opposed to just. It's just too much pressure, I, and I feel like yeah, Warner Brothers just hasn't shown that they can live up to that. Um, even when they try to do, you know, the Shazam was cool. Shazam, Shazam was cool, and we they they benefited because he was a little bit connected to the Justice League, and you know, and Shazam has had time on television where you mm -hmm. kind of knew who he was, and, and he's been in enough animated films. But like Booster Gold is essentially like what well, we saw him like one time on Smallville and. Maybe in Justice League the animated series, like mm -hmm. I, I, just, I don't know if that's enough. I mean, it, 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 again, well, I think with, I mean, with Blue Beetle, though, if you time up with Blue Beetle, because I know they have a big connection. Yeah, maybe. And Blue Beetle's know. a movie, and Blue Beetle's a whole ass movie. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Movie. He's, he's movie material. He's a movie going because he was supposed to go HBO Max at first, and then they was like, "Nah, we fucking up real bad." So we, he we is going. Out. Yeah. 
he is going to he is going to theater. So that is definitely happening. But listen, that's all I got out of the emails. Again, hit me up, Mad Titan Podcast at gmail.com, Mad Titan Podcast at gmail.com, or call the hotline 818-276-6947. Listen, that's it for episode 91, man. To the homie Nick Alexander. Nick, I appreciate you, bro. Thank you as always, my dude, for coming through and rocking with me. Go ahead and tell the people how they can find you and let them know what all you got going on. Yeah, if uh, if you guys want to follow me, you can add me at the Nick of Comedy, N-I-C-K-O-F-C-O-M-E-D-Y, Nick of Comedy. Uh, I perform stand-up in L.A. Uh, I have my uh, my comedy uh, special album. I'm, I'm, I'm tightening up. I, I, I shot some more stuff for it, so it's been taking me a little bit to get out, but I'm going to have it out this year. So if you follow me at Nick of Comedy, all social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, you can stay tuned for when I get ready to put that out. And yeah, man, and I do shows in LA. So just yeah, stand and look up, follow my page, and I'll, and I'll let you know what I'm performing. I thank you so much for that, brother. Y'all already know where to find me Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, all that. Mr. J Washington, M R J A Y. You should know how to spell Washington. My YouTube channel, youtube.com slash J A Y Washington 80 over there. Blurge in the hood, B L E R G S, the letter N T H E H O O G, every Tuesday and Thursday, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. on the East Coast, me and Winston A. Marshall. And to everybody who wants to show love and support, and I show how much I appreciate y'all. So you want to join my super villain squad over on Patreon, patreon.com slash Mr. J. Washington. Thank you to all the members of the squad who are also producers of the Mad Titan Podcast. Yes, when you support me, you help me produce this, you help me get this out. So I thank y'all. And thank you to all the members. Alberto Rios, thank you for being at the one-on-one level. Brock Severson, John C. Wilson, thank you for being at the one-on-one level. Cheryl Foreman, Christopher Lee. Chris, thank you at the one-on-one level. Chris Conley, Dan Bimke, David Adams, Davlin, Edward Wilshire, Fanboy, Cantina, Fulman Pockets, Fred Castillo, Hillary Dellums, James Roberts, Jim Payne, thank you. Jolene, thank you as well. Justin Square, Kenneth Davis, Kirsten Oliveria, Marcus Burton, Marlon, AZ Badfish, I appreciate you, Patrick Harden, Quentin and Milrow, Randy Constance, thank you for coming back, bro, at the 101 level. I appreciate you. Rudy Rueda, thank you at the 101 level. And Soul Golden, thank you all. Again, if you want to support, you support over on Patreon. Or again, cash out, Venmo, over whatever your heart, whatever the Lord puts on your heart, how you want to help. Listen, I'll be back next Monday with an all-new episode. Take care. Don't go away. I'll be back. Bye.